Good evening and welcome to the Melissa Cardinals Network. This is Trey Graham, Coach Matt Nally, the head football coach of the Melissa Cardinals. We welcome you to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. We broadcast every Monday from the Dugout Sports Grill at the Zplex. Coach Nally, you know what's coming. Right. How about 10 in a row? Yes, sir, and I'm going to say it again. I hope it's 11, <laughs> I hope it's 12, I hope it's 13, I hope it's 14. Yep, that's pretty uh, surprising our opening there, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, 10-game <laughs> winning streak. Yes, Started 0-2. Now 10 in a row, big victory over Ennis, 42 to 38 was the final score. Lots of different stats we can talk about, but let's go with this one first. It was a game of runs. Mm -hmm. It was Ennis 10-0. Right. Then it was Melissa 28-10. Right. Then it was Ennis 38-28. Right. So you had a 28-point run after their 10-point run, and then they turned around and had a 28-point run on you. Right. And then you had a 14-point run on them to finish 42-38. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, it, it goes back to, first off, we knew going into the game that they're, you know, because most coaches will script their first 10 or first 15 plays. And we knew, that, I mean, that's a Hall of Fame coach, um, and he's an offensive guru. So we knew going into the game that his scripted plays were probably going to give us some fits. Uh, those first 10 to 12, 15 plays. So that first drive went the way that they hoped it would went. It went. Uh, we hoped we would have a little bit more of a of a pushback, but we had kind of seen what their plan was. Um, so that's the 10-10-0. And then when we got on offense, um, we had to adjust to some of the things that they were doing. You know, it's always a chess game. And uh, once we adjusted – you saw the the, the, the difference. Um, but, you know, Jake making an unbelievable interception. Once again, we're adjusting as they're adjusting. Um, and we adjusted, and Jake did his job and did a great job and got that interception. But um, uh, And then so it's 28 to 10. And then you are a part of uh, the worst nightmare of football, you know, if you're a Cardinal fan, um, for that five-minute span. Um and then, I've, and I've never been a part of a, of a game where it's, you know, I mean, it's 38 to, to 28, and, I, I, you know, you're sitting there thinking, oh, my goodness gracious, like, you know, uh, maybe just momentum and things are going their, their way, and maybe they're supposed to win the game. But the thing about it, and I've been telling people all weekend, was there was never a doubt in a kid's mind. Every single kid was extremely positive on the sideline. Um, Every single kid was just – it was like we were supposed to win. And every kid believed that, hey, it's we're supposed to win the game. So um, when the sideline, the way it was, uh, it, A, it calmed me down. But, B, I knew that we were going to win the game based off of, of, of our sideline and where our kids reacted. So um, it was almost like, you know, it's, it's a never um, – it's a 12-round it's a boxing match. And, yeah, it might be the ninth round, um, and we might have just got knocked down, and we got to the eight count, uh, but we're going to get back up and keep fighting. So that was awesome I think we me. need to quote Nate Hemsley right now. This is why he would say that's why you play four quarters. Correct, correct, exactly right. You know, and then the fourth quarter, you know, we own that fourth quarter. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, it's once again, it's kudos to the kids. It's the resiliency of the kids. It's the leadership of the kids um, and the assistant coaches and what they did. And um, Yeah, it was a great game to be a part of, a lot of fun. Cardinals had a big first-round playoff victory over Hallsville. This was the second-round playoff victory over Ennis. That moves them on to the third round called the regional semifinals. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. We said that the Cardinals are on a 10-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about your opponent. They've got a winning streak going on as well. Our offensive player of the game that the fans will meet in just a few moments, Nate Adajokin. He hasn't been the offensive player of the game since last game. <laughs> 29 carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns on the ground, one touchdown Not a bad reception. Night. Not a bad night. And another guy who's a regular here, Jacob Fields, our defensive player of the game, that big interception return mm -hmm. uh, to, to change the momentum of the game. Talk about, again, because you talk about them a lot, Nate and Jake. You know, and Nate has gotten better as the season progressed. You know, he's really, you know, um, accepted what his role is, and that's that brute uh, 
uh, back that we're looking for, you know. Um, and it's really cool to see, you know, Jake and Nate in that running back position because Jake is kind of like that thunder, you know, that brute uh, running back where ja uh, Jake is more like that lightning guy, you know, the, the guy that can uh, change the scoreboard really, really quickly. So it's fun to watch them in that. But Nate has progressively gotten better throughout the year. Um, his vision have gotten better. His feet have gotten better. He is just so strong as well. So, I mean, that obviously helps him out. And then Jake is a kid that every time, I mean, and I know I'm biased, but when teams kick off and he catches it, I say they kicked it to the wrong kid. Um, when he picks a pass off, um, I always say it's a touchdown, always. You know, um, if he gets past – uh, the first level, I say it's a touchdown if he's playing running back. He's just such an explosive kid, um, and it's really fun to watch. Both of those kids are amazing kids, going to be amazing husbands and fathers and citizens one day, uh, raised right. Um, we're glad they're Melissa Cardinals and uh, super glad they're on our football team. We're going to talk Melissa Cardinals football in a minute, the third round of the playoffs. But let's talk a little other football. We're both football fans. Yeah. We watch yeah. other things. Big win for the Black Knights. Thanks for bringing oh, that heck up. Yeah, heck Army yeah. Army with a big victory this past Saturday at historic Mikey Stadium. <laughs> but there's an interesting game in the third round of the playoffs. The Orange People and the Purple People. Right, the right, Salina Bobcats, 11-1. Right. right. And the Coyotes, 12-0. Right. The dream is still alive right. for the Purple People. We said Salina's 11-1. and one. Their only loss was to Anna by right. three points. Right. You got no stake in this one. You'll be actually busy while they're playing. They'll be playing right before you do on Friday. But your thoughts on the orange people and the purple people? I think it's so hard. Um, I mean, we did it last year. But I think your prep and everything going into that game, it's hard to beat somebody twice in the same year. <laughs> Which will actually be a topic in a minute, yes. And, you know, Anna and that Salina game, I think going into it, Anna had something to prove in that game. And Salina, you know, just, hey, we're gonna, we're still the big dog, yada, yada, yada and, and we still own this and this, that, and another. Well, the, the, the roles have now reversed. And I think now Salina is like, I, we've got something to prove now. Um, that you got lucky, per se, in the, in the first game. So, um, you know, I think Coach Parr, which um, I know, sorry, Melissa fans, but I text him and, and tell him congratulations. And All he's done in two years is 19-3. Uh, and three. Right. He's done a great job. So, um, I, you know, call him, text him, and, and, and whatnot, congratulate him. And he's done a really good job there. Um, but I, I, I'm sure he's telling us to his players, like, you've got to be focused and, and locked in. And, um He's got some really um, dynamic and explosive players on his team. And it's so cool to see the, the contrast because Salina is, is in a little bit of drought with talent, but they've kind of went back to their old school roots and like, hey, we're going to control the clock. We're going to run downhill. We're going to be in the dead tee, and we're going to do this, and um, we're going to play really good defense. And um, But, you know, I mean, I, if, if I was a betting man, I don't know who to bet bet with um i mean i want to say anna just because they're our neighbors um and i don't want to say salina because of who they are but um but man it's that would to me that's the game of the week that is the game of the week to watch uh because it was a close game last time uh there's some things that went anna's way in the game um but, yeah, I mean, I think Coach Parr and them are going to do an unbelievable job scheming for those guys, and they're going to have their kids ready to play. And, like I said, I think it's going to be the game of the week. That's the Salina versus Anna playoff game that's going to be played in Allen on Friday afternoon for those of you who are otherwise high school football fans. <laughs> so, as we wrap up this segment, talk about that. You – follow other teams you pay attention you know what's going on you come tell me Carthage updates and all kinds of stuff so talk about just the fact that you are a high school football fan yeah you know I mean first off I have a lot of buddies that are that are coaching um, and I, I want to root for their teams and I want to know how they're doing if it's a close ball game in in Melissa Texas um, I have no idea what's going on anywhere else if we're in a, in a game where 
people, have, we've started separating ourselves. Um, I have a coach in the press box that is constantly looking at scores. And, you know, it's more playoff teams, opponents that we could potentially play. Um, but I might ask, you know, hey, how is, you know, uh, Bonham doing or uh, um, Lockhart or, or whatever, Carthage, uh, Gilmer, people like that. Like, how are those people doing? Um, but the, what I do, because it's so hard to go to sleep after a game, um, what I do is I'll sit in my office and I'll just start scrolling over my phone or get on the internet. A, you look at scores first, and then, and I'm still an, an old man. Like I like to read, so like I'll go to the Dallas Morning News and um, it, it'll let, let you read about the game, not just the box score, but you can go to the summary and read about it. Um, but I'm, I'm texting people Friday night, Saturday, hey, congratulations, or hey, man, that was a great game. Keep your head up. Um, things like that because it's still about kids you know and those coaches are grinding those kids are grinding and uh, at the end of the day I mean I am a high school football fan but I'm more a kid fan um, and a lot of these guys go through I mean coaching is like a roller coaster and um, you know some of those times the the hill is really really tall in some of those times, the valleys are really, really long. So, um, but yeah, we all need to, you know, be encouraging to one another. It's a frat, you know, it really is a frat and, and, and loving uh, one another. But yeah, I love even like, I have a, a buddy who's the head coach at Collinsville and um, I like, you know, I mean, they're still in the playoffs and just little football, you know, small school football to me is awesome. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I enjoy it. It was a big victory in the second round of the playoffs, Melissa over Ennis. We're going to take a break, and you'll get to meet our offensive and defensive players of the game. We'll come back and talk about the next round of the playoffs with Matt and Allie. After this, as the pastor first, Melissa, it's my privilege to invite you and your family to join me and my family in our church home Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. or 1015 a.m. Go to firstmelissa.com to learn about our church home. We'd love to see you this Sunday. We'll take a break and come back more with the Cardinal Scoreboard Show right after this. Hello, welcome back to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. We join you every Monday from the Dugout Sports Grill at the Zplex. This is part of the Melissa Cardinals Network, and you get to meet each week our offensive and defensive players of the game. And for the big playoff victory over Ennis, our defensive player of the game was Jacob Fields. He had an outstanding interception, a great game on defense. Jacob is unfortunately not able to join us today. But our offensive player of the game is here, and his name is Nate Adajokin. He's a junior running back, and he seems to come here a lot. Yes, sir. You haven't been the offensive player of the week since... Last week. Last week, yes. Yes, sir. yes very good. <laughs> so you're back again yes, sir. in the playoff victory over Ennis. 29 carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns on the ground, one touchdown reception. Last week when you were here, Nigel Smith was here, and he said that in the previous game was the first touchdown of his whole life. Yeah. I just scored four. And you had four in the yeah. last game. All right. Are you going to remind him of that? Oh, yes, sir. Of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, big victory over Ennis. Talk about that playoff win. Um, I think we did a lot of good preparing for that team because they used to – they uh, practiced different fronts, so like a four-man or three-man, you know, odd or even. So, I think in terms of preparation, we just did more than they did. All right. So, tell the audience, what does that mean? You're, you're game planning. You're watching film. Yeah. How do you prepare? What does it mean exactly? Uh, we're just practicing for whatever they could do and whatever they have done. So watching film on different teams they've played that run like the same offensive as us or uh, just watching how they have played in the past just helps us every day to get better for the next team. So what does practice look like? You watch film, draw it on the board, and then yeah. you go out on the field. How do you do it on the field? We have like scout team players who help us out and run their defense while we run our offense and – we work up a scheme that works against them. And when you went into the NS game, did they do what you expected or were you surprised? They did pretty much what I expected, yes, sir. Okay. And last week you did it. This week you get to do it again. Talk about the performance of your offensive line. They always – they just do their job every time. They're very physical. Every play we're watching film, you see someone getting pancaked by either Owen or Trevor or all of them. 
They're all just extremely physical. And a big game coming up at the Star this week against Terrell. You guys defeated them once already this year. What is the team looking forward to against Terrell? Uh, well, the first time we played them, they came out in a completely different defense than what we had practiced for. So I think now we're going to be more weary of, you know, they might come out in something different because that was the time we had a bye week and they came back in just something we hadn't seen before. So I think what we're doing right now is just getting like ready for whatever they might run because, you know, their offense, they run the wing T, which is kind of hard for defensive, defenses to guard. So that's what our defense is working on. As for offense, we're putting in new plays, implementing new schemes. Our offensive player of the game for the playoff victory over Ennis, running back Nate Adejokin, three touchdowns on the ground, one touchdown reception, and more touchdowns in that game than Nigel Smith has in his whole life. Indeed. And we'll take a break and talk more with Coach Matt Nally right after this. Welcome back to the dugout. This is Trey Graham and Coach Matt Nally. This week's edition of the Cardinal Scoreboard Show, you got to meet our offensive player of the game for the victory over Ennis, Nate Adejokin. Unfortunately, you could not meet this week's defensive player of the game, Jacob Fields, but you've met him before on a number of occasions. So now it's time to turn our attention to the next round of the playoffs. But before we do that, I don't think a lot of Cardinal fans know about Mrs. Coach Nally. <laughs> Mrs. Coach <laughs> Nally happens to be a Melissa Cardinal as well. <laughs> Yes. So tell everybody what she does. Um, and she is the principal at MREC. Um, and, you know, I, I had this conversation with somebody last week. If you are um, in the daycare, if you're doing, if you're a teacher of pre-K, if you're a teacher of kindergartners through elementary school, you are a special person. Like God blessed you um, in a different way than he blessed me. Um, I taught elementary PE uh, for a few years and those people are just great people those people need to make more money than anybody else those people are so uh, just special people and need to be celebrated so much uh, for what they do um, but yes she is um, she's the principal at MREC and um, really enjoys it now let's turn our attention to the third round of the playoffs after the victory over Hallsville then the victory over Ennis you get to play the Terrell Tigers. Yes, sir. Again. Right. So, in school history, how many times has Melissa played a team twice in one season? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, it's an easy answer. One? Two. Two. Now. Two. 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 Yeah, last season defeated Midlothian Heritage in game four of the year. Yes, and sir. then in the second round of the right. playoffs. So, once before... You've played a team twice in a season. You get to do that again. This Friday, you defeated Terrell a few weeks ago. It was 56-21. Yes, sir. Now you get to play them again. Melissa's on a 10-game winning streak. Terrell's on a 4-game winning streak. In that victory a few weeks ago, Trevor Ham had a nice day. Not bad. Yeah, it was not a bad day. Yes. Yes, sir. 433 yards passing. Eight touchdowns. Yes, sir. And was not even the offensive player of the game. <laughs> right. Lincoln Dunn was. Right, yes. right, right. So you got to do better than 433 and eight touchdowns <laughs> to become offensive player of the game. So you had 415 yards of total offense in the first half. Yes, sir. So all that said, it was a big dominating win over Terrell. And now I know the coach is going to say, who cares? Right, right. It's all in the past. Right, you know, so when we had our team meeting this morning, um, that is something we discussed. I mean, if you go back to the mid-low game last year, the first time we played them, um, we didn't handle them or anything like that, but it was a, a three-possession game. And 48-28 um, was the first game, 50-41, to 41, right. second game. And if you remember that game, we go down by 10 and have to fight our way back to win the game. So um, anything can happen in the playoffs. Anything can happen on a Friday night. Um, so that's got to be just out of your brain and out of your head. So um, but so do you act like, do you pretend we've never played them before and we're starting from zero? I don't think, no, sir, no, sir. I mean, you, you have those conversations. I, I do believe in telling the truth. You know, like we have played these guys before, but the truth is they have gotten better. Um, we mentioned you're on a 10-game winning streak. They're on a four-game right, winning streak. Right, And, you know, they had their backs up against the wall in district, um, and they 
got it together and really pulled through and made the playoffs. You know, a lot of people don't know, but they were picked second to last in our district to go that far, to not make the playoffs, and then they get in, and now they're in the third round. Um, you know, if, if people were playing Vegas, some people would have lost a lot of money or they would have gained a lot of money, you know. Um, so, but, you know, we're in the situation now where – I, I, you got to be I, you got to be truth tellers to kids because kids know, um, but you got to let them know too. Like you, you control your own destiny, and all you can control is what you can control, and that's your attitude and effort. And that's all we ask the kids to do is your best rep. And I really believe this is why the kids had success last Friday against Ennis. We don't look at the scoreboard. We don't concentrate on the scoreboard. We concentrate on your best effort, that play, that rep. Um, and I really think that's what helped the kiddos. But you got to think about that this next Friday night. Terrell's not going to lay down for the Melissa Cardinals. They're in the third round of the playoffs. This is what they've been grinding for since last uh, spring, just like we have. Um, it is going to be a dogfight, and um, we better, better bring a sack lunch and be ready to play. All-time series between the two schools is? Oh, I have no idea. 3-0. and Melissa has a victory in 2020 and 2021 and earlier in 2022 Go and now it's the fourth game all time in the series so you're in the star you're mm -hmm. indoors yes sir the dome yes sir. no weather no mud no rain no wind does it matter does it change your game plan uh no sir i mean we we had opportunities last year to play in the star um and i just think it's an awesome opportunity for a kid to have that opportunity to go and play in the Stars. So when we we were started trying to do this last week, we had to get a four-team agreement with the, the us, Terrell, Everman, and Ennis. And um, us and Terrell, um, I won't name the school, but there was a one school that did not want to do it. But us and Terrell wanted to do it. And um, we were just so fortunate enough to get that um, after the game. And Coach Phelps did an amazing job of scheduling that for us and helping us out with that. But uh, – I just think it's a cool opportunity for the kids. You know, I mean, you don't get – a lot of people don't get to say, I play where the Dallas Cowboys get to practice or whatever the case may be. So I just think it's a really cool thing for the kiddos to be a part of. But, again, no weather, mm -hmm. different sight lines, different lighting, indoors different. Right, right. Um, and you know, it's, it's weird that you say that because about the lighting and things like that is we're trying to figure out our – color coordination for the game uh, just because of that. Um, uh, it, it won't change the game plan and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I, don't, I doubt it changes their game plan either. And, you know, obviously, if we were playing outdoors and it was there was weather issues or whatever the case may be, it, it would go into Terrell's hands a little bit more. They might have the advantage. Um, but since you're inside and whatnot, it's almost like you know, you're practicing on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, so I don't think both squads have – that's not going to be a, be an issue. Um, I really firmly believe that it's going to help out both teams just because of you're not dealing with the cold. Um, obviously, there's no weather, there's no wind, there's nothing like that. So quarterbacks should be sharper. Um, there shouldn't be any issues with the mesh and things like that from the quarterback, running backs exchange. And, and you know, when it comes to snapping and things like that, it shouldn't be an issue either. So uh, – I don't think it changes anything. I think, it, you know, once again, I think it's more of an experience than anything else. I've been telling Coach Steele on the broadcast for years that when you are having football practice on Thanksgiving Day, right. that means you've had a good year. Right, right. But it's a weird week. Right. So talk about that. So when I did was I went to our leadership council um, and asked them when they Define went. what that is. Um, so we have 10 athletes who are our cardinal council. And they make the decisions based off of what we're doing as a team. Uh, they make the decisions on the uniforms. They make the decision on practices and yada yada. And, and then they come back with feedback from the team and things like that. So and I reached out to them and said, hey, when do you guys want to practice? And I thought they did an amazing job of picking. Because normally we practice at 630 in the morning. And they still wanted that AM practice um, but they, they gave themselves a little bit – because now we're practicing from 8 um, to 10, and they gave themselves a little bit more sleeping time, which I totally get. But um, it, it, you could say it messes with uh, the schedule a, a tad. Um, but practice structure-wise and the way we're practicing, it, it looks like any other week. 
The only thing is, is that Friday, because um, normally they're at school and things like that. So we're going to actually bring them in Friday morning, feed them, walk through, uh, pack up, and we're going to let them go. Um, and then we're going to bring them back earlier than normal just to kind of get them back in the routine of it. Um, and then we're going to load the bus and whatnot and get after it. But it's a weird week in the regards of what happens after practice. But I think it's a great week of recovery, you know, because there's nothing – you don't have to worry about anything but football. And, um, you know, I mean, it all, it's also a time to get excited about, you know, seeing people you haven't seen in a while. And, um, you know, I, I talked to the kids today about being thankful. Um, I mean, it's such a great week to reflect. Um, you're here in this situation in your life and f your football life and your regular life because of people – uh, that care about you and uh, what you have done to put yourself in a good situation. So it's a good time to reflect and be happy and positive about those things too. So it is a weird week structurally outside of practice, but I also think it's a great week for kids and coaches to have an opportunity to really, you know, reflect and think about things um, and be thankful for those people and to recover as well. Because a, a kid needs a physical and a mental recovery. And so does a coach. You know, I ran scout team. I was a wing T quarterback. Um, so I'm the scout team quarterback this week. And I'm not going to lie to you, Pastor Graham, I was struggling this morning, you know. Uh, and all I'm doing is handing the ball off. I did skelly and run hole and all this other stuff and, and did team. And I'm like, hey, guys, I need a break, you know. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do uh, tonight when I get home is, is get on that couch. <laughs> <laughs> take a little bit of a break and recover for tomorrow's practice. So, uh, but everyone needs that. I really believe that. And, and you know, teachers the same way. Everyone needs just a break. Um, and I, I believe in self care and, and mental health, not just physical health. So, I think it's good for everybody. 7 p.m. kickoff this Friday at the Star. It's called the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. 7 p.m. Kickoff, 6.30 p.m. pregame show on the Melissa Cardinals Network. The radio side, it will be an NFHS video stream. And, yes, that is controlled by NFHS and the UIL. That's not controlled by the Melissa Cardinals Network. Send your letters and cards to the NFHS. <laughs> but we will have it for you, both radio and video, 6.30 p.m. pregame show, 7 o'clock kickoff at the Star, Friday night. Melissa Cardinals and the Terrell Tigers, the third round of the playoffs. Hope to see you on Friday night. Hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving on Thursday with your family. Hope you will join us at First Melissa on Sunday. For Coach Matt Nally, this is Trey Graham saying good evening from the dugout.